Well, I'm glad we brought you somewhere you've never been before. <laughs> What's the verdict? How'd you like the food? It's very good. Although I must say I was expecting something different. It's just like spicy Chinese. Or... No, we, uh, we love Thai food, don't we, Dora? We certainly do. We've been coming here off and on ever since it first opened. What's your verdict, Sylvia? Sylvia! Sorry, Dad. It was lovely. And thanks for getting us out of the house. I needed to get away from the domestic scene for a while. My German clients, Dieter Muller, belongs to a group that play war games every weekend. They run round the woods in combat fatigue, sh shooting paint pellets at each other. <laughs> Splat! You're dead. <laughs> I mean, it just seems a rather childish way for adults to behave. Childish? To say nothing of the laundry bill every week. <laughs> God, Neil, you're the end. Look, Sylvia, it wasn't my fault Dieter turned up. It was our wedding anniversary. I didn't know he was coming. You could have told him. Well, I couldn't. He was here by then. When he got here. I couldn't. That's not the way to do business. Oh, God. Sylvia. Didn't get married to become a domestic servant, come childminder, come cook. Well, then why did you marry me? To share my life with you as an equal partner in all things, not just a procreate and keep house. So, you don't love the children? You're not oh, interested in Oh, God, that. Neil, that's pathetic and stupid. Of course, I love the children. I just want other things as well. Oh, come on, then, like what? I like to meet stimulating people. I want to pit my wits against the next person. I'd like to earn my corn. I'd like to be treated as an intelligent, thinking human being. What have I ever treated you as anything else? All I've ever said... Oh, I know what you've said. And so often, it's like a boring, broken record. What are you doing here? Didn't you realize? <laughs> 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 Smells good. Had a very good you. you had it early. Some cakes for the boys. Sylvia's bringing them round about three. Mm. You still have the same opinion as you were last night? Mm. It's just a phase. Oh, my God, you and you're just a phase. The amount of times I've heard that. And that. Wexford? Yes? Yeah, I'm on my way. Sudden death. Body on the path. I believe you found the body, sir. Well, it was my little boy, actually. Oh, how old? Six. Well, in your own time, sir. Yeah. Well, I was just taking him to school. We missed the bus, so we took the shortcut. Saw the dog sniffing at something. Next thing I knew, it was saying, it's a lady, Dad, come and look. Uh, you didn't move anything? No, no. We just covered her face. She looked cold. As soon as we got in, I called the station. Well, thanks for your cooperation. I know she is. Do you? Her name's Comfrey. C-O-M-F-R-E-Y. She lives in Carlisle Villas. At least her dad does. Well, we'll uh, get a full report from you later, sir. Inspector? Yeah? Nick, my son, he, 
He thinks she's ill, sick. What? I told him that I didn't want to tell him. Yeah, I did on the same. All right to go. We'll contact you later, Mr. Parker. The boy. You won't have to go to court. No, no, of course not. Don't worry, Mr. Wexford will fix that. Stabbed. Two wounds that I can see. Extraordinary expression. Hmm. You'd expect her to look scared. She hadn't been moved. Last night? Could be. Thin, stiletto-type knife, I guess. A guess? An educated one. <laughs> on her hands banged. Sir? Well, there might be scrapings on her nails. Or oh, the Met report for the last 24 hours for the region. Any sign of a weapon? No, not yet, sir. Well, start a search. When you don't find it, then do a house-to-house. -house. You know, any dogs have barked, anybody heard anything. You know the routine. Sir. Any blood on the killer? Possibly. Yeah. Bus stop, bypass, dry cleaners, laundrette, oh, and the railway station, etc. Airport, sir. Get on with it, Sergeant. Oh. No checkbook. No cards. Expensive wallet. Forty-five pounds. Well, she wasn't killed for her money, was she? the lady, sir? Oh, she'll be fine. Fine. Stella, these gentlemen are... The police. I know. Afternoon. There wasn't anybody at the comfy house. I'm sorry, I forgot. He's in hospital. Oh, is that the cottage hospital? No. It's the infirmary at Stowerton. He broke his hip. Was he close to his daughter? Not that close. What was her name? Rhoda. Rhoda? Oh, that's great for us. She only came down here once or twice a year. Once or twice? Not more. When you say came down here, uh, where from? London, I think. I assumed it was London. London. Your best bet's Mrs Crown. Oh, who's she? The aunt lives next door. Nobody there either at the moment. Still, that's two relatives. Father and an aunt. Something to be going on with. Then there's Brian Scran, upstairs. She knows all about the Comfries. What she doesn't know, she'll invent. 2020 vision and an imagination to match. Have you any idea, sir, when Mrs. Cran will be back? When they chuck her out. Oh, it's like that, is it? Likes a drop. More than a drop. You're all right, Mrs. Parker. When your six year old son finds a murdered victim, Inspector, how do you expect me to see him? <laughs> Nothing from the house to house. People aren't as nosy as they used to be. Where have you been? I've been talking to Mrs. Moore. She came back on the bus from the infirmary with Rhoda last night. And? No, nothing. Just passed the time of day. Let's go and see Comfrey. All right. <laughs> Murdered? Jeez. Not a soul safe anymore. She'd only come to visit her da. That's why we have to see him. Not tonight, Chief Inspector. I couldn't allow that. But I, a word like murder got around the ward. 
God bless us, sure there's none of them but sleep. Nor would any of us. You wouldn't want to obstruct our inquiries, would you, sister? Oh, I'll tell him myself first thing in the morning, and that's a promise. Whether it'll mean anything or not, heaven knows. Is he senile? He's an 85-year-old man. He's had major surgery and then a stroke. If that's to be senile, yes, he's senile. How about Miss Comfrey's home address? There, I can help you. Here we are. Carlisle Villas, Forest Road, Kings Markham. That's his address, not hers. It's the only one we have. We think she may have lived in London. Well, then I can't help you. Didn't wake you up, did I? No. I couldn't sleep. Mm. Missing my bed warmer. Nah. What did you think of that? You remember. When Bobbine was Bobbine. <laughs> £635 a year, excluding boot and bike allowance. This isn't chocolate, is it? It is not. It's cocoa, just like it always was. Yeah, it smells the same, too. Well, you have some. Tired. I'm whacked. Is it a tough one? That's all the makings. Man or woman? Woman. People talk a lot of rubbish about death, Dora. Isn't beautiful. It's downright ugly. Doesn't look like sleep at all. How old? About 45. She looked, I don't know, defiant. It was though she'd cocked a snook at us. <laughs> Getting quite fanciful in your old age. No. This one's going to lead us a hell of a dance. Or know the reason why. Mr. Wexford. Sit down, which whistle? Oh, <clears throat> thanks. It's a bit early for me. Did you get that colour from tomato juice? No, you're right. East wind. Very raw. So, R.I.P. Rhoda, eh? That's a turn up. Was it? It was to me. I'll tell you something. You don't get me down that footpath again in a hurry. It was a sex crime, I take it. I wouldn't have thought so. But I, the only thing she had in her drawers was, was cobwebs. You don't seem heartbroken. Perceptive man. I'll tell you something, she phoned me Friday, so she was coming. That usual? Nothing usual for her to come. Hello, Lillian. Guess who? As if it could be anybody else. I've always liked vintage port. I just pop in to see her tell you how Jimbo's getting on. Were you surprised when she didn't? No. She took the train set back to London. She hated it, tell you. What was that? Turnips and Swedes, that's what she called us. Said so often, you know. Well, what I need now is uh, an exact London address. Well, phone number. No, oh, dear. Well, what do you do if you want to get in touch or call? I wouldn't. What if it was an emergency? Mr. Wexford. I've seen her a dozen times in 20 years. Oh. Well. What does she do for a living? Business. What sort of business? Don't know. But she'd be good at it. <laughs> Eyes like cash registers. Not that money go my way. Or is, poor sod. I wonder how you get along without her. Well, it will be a struggle. <laughs> Mr. Comfrey? Mr. Comfrey? Save your breath, Inspector. 
I'd like to take a peep in his locker. I'm not sure about that. We do have a warrant to search his house. It should cover this. Oh, I'm not so sure. Maybe I'll the armament. You, you stand and watch, okay? Fair enough. What were you expecting? The Shroud of Turin? to see him later. Ah. Hey, <clears throat> sniff this. Can't smell a thing. Nor can I. Don't follow. Len, how many women do you know who don't use a drop of perfume or a splash of toilet water? Don't know many women, Red. Story of my life. Oh, my heart bleeds for you. A lot of paper. Doesn't amount to much. Murder weapon? Took it with him. Oh, did I tell you? Old man Comfrey was on my list. Used to pop into the surgery for a natter. Fit as a flea till this stroke. What I want to know is, where does she live? London. Next person that says that to me, I'll chin them. Nineteen seventy. What was? When he last chucked something out. Oh. Pins, screws, keys, nails. Some old stuff for every bit. Oh. Some cigarette cards. Oh, of who? Cricketers. Who? Sutcliffe. Ames. Wright. Heard of any of them? Yeah. Worship them all. <laughs> Look at this. Road of Comfrey. Has to be. Couldn't prove it by me. Why, you didn't see her until she was dead 20 years later? Looks more like her dad, yeah. Any uh, diaries or address books? No, nothing like that, I'm afraid. Oh. Right. Well, I'll go and have another look downstairs. All right. It's very strange, isn't it? Her address isn't written down here anywhere, and she hasn't given it to her aunt or any of the neighbours, or her dad's doctor, or the infirmary, and her old man hasn't got it with him. Well, he's probably got it in his mind. Oh, the only thing that's in his mind is where the fruit guns are. Maybe she did it deliberately. Maybe she didn't want anybody to know where she lived. Why not, though? I don't know. You finish up here, bring these with you, and then get Lillian Crown to do the uh, formal ID. All right. By the way, you like her. She's just up your street. <laughs> Marbles. Apple pie. Earning me keep. <laughs> How well did you know Rhoda Comfrey? As well as I know my own kids. Rather see me than her own dad. She said so often enough. Well, what I need at the moment is her address in London. You don't happen to have one. No, why should I need it? Well, I don't know. I just thought. You met the aunt yet? Lillian Crown. <laughs> aunt and niece must have been about the same age. Mm, scandal, that woman. Oh, to be fair, though, she had this illegitimate baby by some serviceman or other. 
John. <laughs> Poor little Mike was mental. Rhoda used to love him. <laughs> Trundled him round in the pram. Then do you know what Lillian did? Put him in an home. Rhoda would have been about 16 then. I remember when she was at the county eye. Always reading, always learning. French, Latin, typing lessons. Mrs Parker. Not much to look at, mind you. <laughs> None of the comforts were. I never had a boyfriend or anything like that. Still, we were this today. If it wasn't for the money. Money? Well, the money I'm telling you about. The money she won. How? <laughs> if you listen, I'll tell you. Oh, uh, sorry. Was at the office. There was a group of them. And they had this win on the pools. How much? Ooh, thousands. <laughs> she never said exactly. And I didn't ask. Jim Comfrey thought he was an easy street. <laughs> but not with our Rhoda. <laughs> She just up and left. <laughs> oh, that would be oh, about 20 years ago. I'm off to London, I'll divide to seek me fortune. How? How do you mean? Well, uh, how was she going to earn this fortune? Well, as a reporter, of course. Didn't I say she worked on a newspaper? I don't believe you did. Oh, I don't think you're listening. No, I'm hanging on your every word. She was working as a secretary in Pumphrey to the editor of the Gazette. Wrote the odd article now and then, so she told me. Uh, Mrs. Crowd said that she was in business. Oh, you listen to her, and you'll never solve buttons. Uh, perhaps you're right. Well, thank you very much indeed, Mrs. Parker. Oh, you don't want to hear any more? Well, not just at the moment, thank you. Tell me, why is it you folk can never wait till it's typed up neat and tidy? That a serious question. Aye, pees me off. Have you ever heard of the 24-24 rule? Never. The most important hours in a murder inquiry are the last 24 hours of a victim's life and the first 24 hours after the body's been discovered. And I figure them both. Right. So. Are you interested in the osteoarthritic condition of a right hip? Did it kill her? Nope. Well, I'm not interested. Or that a right kidney weighed nine grams? No. Or maybe the fact that there were two stab wounds, both entering into two centimetre vertical slits into the lower chest, travelling in an upward direction for 14.5 centimetres, one of which penetrated the heart, thus causing death. The knife had a long, narrow blade with a sharp point. Flick knife. Very lightly. The wounds were made cleanly and without hesitation. I'd say the blows were forcefully struck by someone standing directly facing her. Right-handed? All oh, right. What time? Between 7 and 9 p.m. That's more of the style. I think maybe I'm getting the hang of it, eh? Tommy, what are those uh, little red marks on the inside of the left wrist? Nothing wrong with your eyesight, is there? What were they? Rat bites. Rats? After death, you will live in the country. That's not surprising. What is? Surprising. Well, our generative organs were in a healthy condition and our hymen was intact. A virgin. Straight from the horse's mouth. What? What's so extraordinary about that? She was an unmarried woman. <laughs> I don't believe it. Unusual in a woman of 45, don't you think? Unusual today in one of 15. <laughs> Yes, yeah, all right. Maybe one love affair. Forget love. No romance, no adventure, no experiment. It is remarkable. Sad. Still, it's less interesting to us than where she lived, how she lived, and who her friends were. There must have been a milkman or a newspaper boy, someone. Never mind. Tomorrow's papers. That'll open the floodgates. What about motive, Mr. Wexford? Uh, not yet. How about theft? Well, she had a sum of money in her handbag, but he wasn't touched. Uh, the sum of money, is it enough to be suspicious? It was £45, to be precise. Didn't sound like a paymaster for the Mafia. Mr. Burden has a picture of the victim. I'd like you all to take one with you. I must stress that it's not a good likeness. It's 20 years old. They do say that every picture is 
worth a thousand words. Not true. It was a rumour put around by a photographer. <laughs> <laughs> but there is one angle that I would like you to plug for me. Rhoda, the reporter. Did she ever succeed in journalism, Fleet Street, the provinces, or even the local Tesco broadsheet? I'd like to know about it, sooner rather than later. Oh, and uh, thank you all for coming. Oh, pleasure. Right. Right. Harry. Yes? You used to be with the old gazette. Yes. Plain featured, dark haired girl, secretary to the George Rollins, the editor. In the mid 60s. Do you remember her? And that was Rhoda? Could have been. Name of the game those days was to stay out of the editor's hair. Couldn't fire you if you didn't know your name. <laughs> yeah, Rollins is still in Pomfret. Is he? Yeah. Shall I ask him to bell you? Well, the sooner the better. Okay. <laughs> interesting. Yes, I'll tell the Chief Inspector as soon as he comes in. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have your number. Thank you for calling, madam. I see her. All she has to do is sniff. I don't want to know. What else? Oh, I have a spiritualist in Lewisham. No. How about a medium in Rottingdean? No. A son whose mother abandoned him on the church? No. Anything in the newspapers? No. Oh, Mr. Rowland's ran. Used to be the editor of the Gazette. And well, what did he say? Doesn't know anything. No address, nothing. If anybody wants me, I'm going to the inquest. Any feedback on the story? Well, it's early days yet. You must have a theory. Yes, I have a theory. She's like a hermit, lives alone under her assumed name in a tent in Hyde Park. Can I quote you on that? Any time. I can't stand snotty coroners. Oh, come on, Reg. He's always like that. Always ready with a scalpel. Spade, more like. I didn't think I was personally to blame that we hadn't got an address. No bank manager to say she had an account. No landlord. Nothing. She could be a spy. Oh, come on. You'll be asking me to believe she's a call girl next. Well, I had wondered about that. Oh. <laughs> the only virgin dad in London. <laughs> she came from London. He probably followed her down. She was intending to go back to London. He did go back. I see what you're thinking. I think you'd better get up there. Sylvia here. She's left Neil. What? Just walked out after lunch and came here. Well, just like that. Left her husband and came back to, to Mother. I can't believe it. Oh, darling, it's true. Apparently, they've been having a continuous quarrel since last Wednesday evening. Well, where is she now? She's in the living room. Robin and Ben are in the garden. I don't know how much they realise. Oh. Darling, don't be harsh on her. And have I ever been harsh on my children? I haven't been harsh enough. I've always let them do exactly as they like. Should have put my foot down when she wanted to get married at 18. Hello, Dad. Well, it's a bad business, Sylvia. I... I don't suppose you want me here. I've nowhere else to go. I'll find a job and somewhere for me and the boys to live. Don't speak to me like that, Sylvia. This is your home. What have I ever said to you to make you speak to me like that? Good afternoon, sir. Can I help? Yes, I'm a police officer. 
The Commissioner himself shops here, so why shouldn't you? Well, I'm not shopping, unfortunately. I'd just like to ask your help. So, what can I tell you? This, uh, wallet. It's one of ours. Best English calf. End of a range. We finished them quite recently. But you happen to know who bought it? I can but try. If you wait just a moment. Thank you. Well, that didn't take long. Wasn't difficult. In fact, it was the last of the line. He's a regular customer. He? Yes, Mr. Grenville West, one of our most esteemed clients. What does that mean? He buys a lot of your things? Yes. Do you have his address? Of course. Oh. Are you interested in the tie, sir? Oh, no, um, not today, thank you. So it's true, you are applying to join the Met. Ah, a bit old in the tooth for that, are we? Some of those inspired Wexford guesses. Theories, Howard, theories. Theories. So, how can I help? Granville West. And I mean anything to you. Of course, the Finsbury Park poisoner. <laughs> Had you going for a moment. Being a little frivolous this morning, aren't we? Leave. Got a week's leave coming up. Oh, are you going? Madeira. Oh, I tell you what that was. Yes, uh, Grenville West, successful novelist, writes what's described in the trade as bodice poppers, historical romances. Covers usually a rather large lady popping out a rather small dress. That's a gentleman. Might be worth chatting to. Road a country murder. A family interest, Uncle Reg. <laughs> I've got his address, so I'll <clears throat> go around and see him. All right for transport? No, oh, thanks, Barney. Anything else I can do to help? Well, there is one little small favour. Isn't there always? Could you get somebody to look up in the electoral register or the telephone book? See if they can turn up a road of comfrey. I'll put Inspector Baker onto it. You remember, Michael? <laughs> Gloomy sod. <laughs> oh, not anymore. He's remarried. Anyway, I'll um, tell him we're on our patch. Yeah, that'll stop him laughing in church. I'm sorry to disappoint you. I'm a dry white. Can't win them all. That's 120. Oh? Yeah. I don't think I remember you. I don't think you've seen me. Is your boss in? You mean Vic? Well, if Vic's your boss. Well, he's doing the delivery. Tell him it's the law. Victor Vivian. No trouble, is there? Oh, there's a bit of cork in my wine. Oh, <laughs> uh, Susie, could you... Uh, good, thanks. Uh, are you from the local shop? No. Oh, I didn't think so. They know I'm here, DCS Fortune and D.I. Baker. Oh, I know Michael Baker. I'm looking for Mr. Greville West. <sighs> so I'm not about to lose my licence. Well, not before lunch. <laughs> You're out of luck. You miss Gwen. I know. I tried his flat. Thank you. He's in France. Francophile. Pops over there as often as he can. Research. Tax-free holidays, what I call it. <laughs> Do you know him well? Oh. 
I should. 14 years has been my tenant. I own the flat. Oh, well, I'll throw another name at you. Rhoda Comfrey. The one who was murdered? Yeah. Newspaper reader. We think there might be a connection between her and uh, Mr. West. <laughs> You're joking. She was, well, what, what age? Well, 45. Well, Gwen's not a day for 35. Well, 38, top weight. Well, we weren't suggesting a relationship, just that they might know one another. Gwen's got a girl, always hanging around. Not that he seems that interested. Plays the field, that's what I reckon. What's the girl's name? Polly. Polly what? No idea. Brunette, 25. Not my sort. What about, uh, what about this? Christ, it's familiar. You might have seen her in here or outside in the street with West or up in his flat. Uh, Oh, no, it's, it's no good. Maybe it'll come to me. The wallet, though, that I do recognise. Do you? It's Gren's. Is it? Well, hold on a sec, may, may Oh, this is new, isn't it? Pretty new. Gren's got one like it, but worn, you know, knackered out. A lot of fivers come out of it, a few tenors as well. <laughs> do you have an address for him in France? No, he doesn't stay put. He tours in his car. Normandy, I think that's where he's gone. <laughs> the photo, I just realised. Oh, God, I am a burke. Saw it in the newspapers. Yeah, that's right. I was looking at it only last night. I'm sorry. <laughs> Why, well, you didn't object 30 years ago? Well, I don't object now. It's just that I'd like a little warning. <laughs> uh, you can take that disapproving look off your face. <laughs> Only came up here to have a bit of a thing and a bit of peace and quiet. I've seen enough kids' television. Howard rang. And? No record of any Rhoda Comfrey in Kenbourne. Uh, I didn't think there would be. That'd be too good, wouldn't it? Oh. Why? I brought you a present. Oh, thank you. Oh, covers a little bit blurry, don't they? Oh, they say it's good though. Who's they? Oh, Howard and them up in London. Oh, they knows a thing or two in London. They do. Oh, did you remember to get the tickets for Sheila's preview when you were up there? Uh, no, I I'll see to it later. Are you coming down, Reg? As soon as this. Uh, Migraine's gone. Reg, you have never had a migraine in your life. But nobody else knows that. Sylvia knows. Sylvia knows. It's that prawn I had at lunch. Oh. Reg. Well, it was right off. It's not the pneumonia. <laughs> Reg, that is not good enough. Good news? Well, it's news. I don't know how good it is. I started off with West's publisher. Helpful? I've known brick walls more responsive. Par for the course. Ah. Well, anyway, they put me onto his agent. Brick wall number two. Well, no, to be fair, she did at least try to be helpful, but she doesn't have an address for him in France. Apparently, he doesn't like to be pinned down. Man after my own heart. No, he may ring, but then again, he may not. And she's never heard of Rhoda Comfrey. Well, she doesn't know how lucky she is. However... Ah. Polly. Remember Polly? How could I forget? Polly. 
It's the only name we've got. Her real name's Pauline. Pauline Flinders. And she's West's secretary. No address or phone number, I'm afraid. No, of course not. Uh, get me D.I. Baker at uh, Kenborn Vale, will you please? Thank you. Well done, Mike. Good. Not much to be going on with, is it? A girl who knows a man who might conceivably know Rhoda Comfrey. Hardly you weaker time. Well, it wouldn't make me run naked down the street. What are West's books like? The way his publisher was going on, you think he was some kind of genius? Oh, just reworkings of old Jacobean plays, you know, Ford, Webster. Oh, don't know them. Cover her face. Mine eyes dazzle. She died young. Oh, poetry. <laughs> well, as Rossini said of Wagner, he has his moments, but he's also got his quarter of an hour. <laughs> Hello? Oh, Michael. Reg Raxford. Yeah. Yes, it's a, it's a lovely day, yeah. Uh, Michael, I'd like uh, another of those little favours. Yes. Yes, but surely this Polly, or whoever she is, would have recognised Rhoda. Assuming she'd seen the photograph. Hmm. Maybe she didn't see it. Maybe she never met Rhoda. It seems very few people have. Maybe she has something to hide. Hasn't everyone? Oh, Mike. What was it? Was it the mazaka or the hot pot? Moussaka. I thought so. I was as sick as a dog. It's the Greeks. Still peeved about the Elgin marbles. Morning, <laughs> gents. Must have expired. Doreen. Cook says the moussaka's good. Does she? One hot pot. Two hot pots. Better make it three. She will be upset. Oh, rather her than us. <laughs> We were just trying to fit Rhoda Comfrey and uh, Grenville West together. Writing for a newspaper, writing novels, not that far apart. Well, how did she get the wallet? Presumably he gave it to her. Reason? Services rendered. For instance? An invaluable piece of research, a good twist in the plot. Maybe she helped him out of a creative block. Three hot pots. Thank you, Doreen. At least it hasn't put you off your grub. <laughs> I think we're closer then than any of us realises. Sorry to disturb you, Lord, sir. Don't apologise. The I Baker's called up from. Canmurn, yeah. Well, they come up with an address on. Uh... Yeah. It's uh, Pauline Flinders. Sir. Didn't I tell you? Do you want me to check it out? No. We'll check it out. I fancy an afternoon in London. Good time, Mike. Ten minutes over the hour. Eight, actually. Ah, Mr. Tell. Good afternoon. We'd uh, like to speak to uh, Miss Pauline Flinders. Polly. Can we come in? Miss Flinders. Yes. Inspector Wexford, King's Markham CID. Now, this is Mr. Burden. May we ask you some questions? Yes. Do you uh, read the papers? Sometimes. Did you read about uh, the death of a, the murder of a Miss Rhoda Comfrey on the evening of the 8th? Might have done. This is the uh, picture in the papers. If you could imagine it 20 years on. Perhaps you might have seen her in the company of Mr. Granville West. No. You are Mr. West's uh, secretary. Part-time, yes. How long have you been doing it? Uh, two years. When you were working for him, uh, 
in his flat? Perhaps you uh, presumably answer the phone. Sometimes. Let in his visitors. Amongst his uh, friends, acquaintances, business associates, could there be anybody who could be conceivably this woman? Now, think carefully. Rather a deep voice. No. He's supposed to be in France, isn't he? Yes, he is in France. He sent me a card. Oh. May I see it? Hey, uh, tapestry town. May I read it? Seems to be having a nice time. Have you, uh, ever seen this before? Looks like Grenville's, the one he lost. Lost? He thought he dropped it on a bus. We found this in uh, Miss Rhoda Comfrey's handbag. Sorry, I don't know what to say. Did he report the loss? He asked me to, but I didn't. I didn't exactly forget, but someone told me that the police don't really like you reporting things you've lost or found. A woman my mother knows says it just makes too much paperwork. So, um, you can't help us, Miss Flinders? No. Well, thanks very much for your time. something important. Well, go on. On the night of the 8th, Polly was here with me. We were together all evening, cutting out a dress. <laughs> On the night of the 8th? You sure? Yeah. Thank you. I think he's gone home to tea. Come on. That's it. Ooh, there we go. Now. Grandpa? Yes? So, how do we know that's a he? Oh, I think I'd better get your mother to tell you that. Left, right, left, right, left, right. Swing your arm. A nice hot bath, eh? Yeah? Yeah? Hmm? yeah. Oh. Would you like some of Nana's bubbles? Yeah. Would you? Come on then, let's go and get them. No, impossible! <sighs> oh, the grand old Duke of York. He had ten thousand men. Where you want to? <laughs> Truth, bath night. Lots and lots of bubbles. That's good. Did you see the rat? Maybe that's tea. Do you need me? Oh, I think we can manage. Some clean march them up to the top of the hill, then he marched them down again. Good morning, Mrs. Parker. Oh, I knew you'd be back. Oh, did you? Like everyone else, you don't listen. I've got news for you. I know. Jim Comfrey's dead. Lydian told Stella. It's not right, you know. Everyone's death should mean something to someone. Yeah, I agree. What'll happen to the money? Rhoda's money. I don't know. Don't know if she had any. Oh, there'll be some. It'll all go pouring down Lillian's throat. <laughs> we were thinking that uh, Rhoda lived in London under a pseudonym, a, a false name. I know what a pseudonym is. <laughs> well, when people do that, they usually take a name that's uh, familiar, like their mother's maiden name. What was that? Crawford. Well, that's something to go on. 
What about Crown? Oh, no. Rhoda had no time for Lillian. But why should she want to call herself by anything but her own name? Well, that's what we got to find out. Sir? The DCC wants to see you at his house. Urgent. OK. Then. He's working at the station. Mm -hmm. That's twice he's allowed you out on your own. Oh, thank you, George. Oh, that's the best sound in the world. Eyes clinking in the glass. First a minute. Is he married, your Mr. Wexford? Yes, he is. Children? Two daughters, both grown up. Must have been an attractive man in his day. Well, I wouldn't know. I wasn't around, was I? Oh, cheeky. I'll tell him. I wish I'd met him a few years ago. Could have had some fun. So how's it going? Any leads? You don't really expect me to answer that, do you? Don't I? I heard somewhere that if nobody talks, the police are impotent. Is that true? Well, there's a grain of truth in it, yes. I can't imagine Mr. Wexford impotent. So, who's talking? I think that's for us to find out, don't you? Wexford. Nine whole days. Going for some sort of record? Looks like it, sir. Do you remember John Du Rose at the Met? Four day Johnny. Hmm. How do you solve murders in four days? In 85% of murder cases, the killer is known to the victim. High on the list of suspects are the next of kin and the person that found the body. In this case, an 85 year old man who since died and a six year old boy. That's the sort of case it is, sir. Well, clear it up. They're on my back. You look as though you need that. Oh, I didn't spot you there. Bad day. Well, not vintage. What about you? No. Where's your mum? Children's teas. Ah, oh, sorry I've been a bit scarce on the ground. You always were. The pomfret poisoner, the Stabberton sadist. Well, it's better than having a bank manager for a dad. Don't you believe it? I'd have given anything to have a nine-to-five dad. Really? Yes. Oh, I never thought about it. Your mum did. Oh, she never mentioned it. Well, you never heard. Don't start on us. A woman doesn't expect to be listened to. We're a partnership. Two equals. <laughs> Only one partner is less equal than the other. Not true. Well, remind me, what's this partnership called? I don't follow. Well, why is Mum called Mrs. Reg Wexford? Oh, Sylvia. It's not worth the hassle. To you, it's not. Couldn't you just... compromise? <laughs> I know what you want. Just let me have my say first, all right? Of course I want her back. And kids. I love her. You know that, Reg. But I can't meet her conditions. I won't. I have to have some wretched old pair living here, which will mean the boys moving in together, pay her a salary we can ill afford, just so that Silk can go off and train for some profession that's already overcrowded. She's a good wife and mother. And I don't see any reason to employ someone to do the things she does so well while she goes up and trains for something she may not do well at all. Have a drink. No, no, thank you. Well, I will. And you needn't tell me I've had too much already. I know I have. The point is, 
Why can't she do her job and let me do mine? I don't say hers is less important than mine. I don't think she's inferior. My God! There are times I wish I was a woman. No money worries, no real responsibility, no slogging off to an office day in, day out for 40 years. She wanted the family, Reg. Every bit as much as I did. We each have to do what our talents equip us for. Okay, I'll dry the dishes, okay. I'll see if she gets any labor-saving equipment she wants. Couldn't you compromise? Couldn't you get a woman in just for a year until uh, Ben goes to school? Well, couldn't she wait for a year until Ben goes to school? Marriage is supposed to be about give and take. It seems to me I, I do all the giving and she does all the taking. Yes. Well, that's what she says as well. But I'll go now. Don't drink too much, Neil. It's not the answer. Oh, isn't it? I'm sorry, Reg. I've every intention done out of getting smashed out of my mind. Downstairs and sleep on the sofa with the telly on. I think Robin may have bronchitis. He's very chesty. Temperature? Slight one. He didn't get wet, did he, when you were looking for the rat? No, he did not. I won't ask him. How did it go? Uphill. He's being unreasonable. Well, both as bad as each other. The region of calm winds around the equator. What is? The doldrums. Cheer up. The worst is not so long as we can say this is the worst. I got freeborn on my back. I never thought I'd miss Grizzly. What does he want? Oh, just to G me up. Nine days and no address, Reg. Trying to second record, are you? Is a mystery. It's as though she'd stepped off the edge of a space module. Forty-five-year-old woman walks out of a life, a life that she's been living, oh, for the twenty years odd in the smoke, and nobody misses her. Why not? You were going to make it. Well, I'm run as fast as us as England won the World Cup. Whose idea was this, anyway? Mine. You're right. I will be, but I know I'm not on a fool's errand. A London GP has told us that Rhoda Comfrey is on his list of patients. Did you speak to him? I did. But he's not a nut? No, checked him out and then phoned him back. Well, what took him so long? He was abroad, on his honeymoon. Well, that's no excuse. Thank you. What time do we see? Straight out the search. To be frank, I didn't recognize the photo. It was the name that registered. Do you have an address? Uh, Rhoda and Comfrey, 6 Prince Vale Road, Parish Oak. Should be set to music. I gather you were somewhat desperate. More than somewhat. When was the last time you saw her? Now, that's a strange thing. I've only ever seen her once. Do you have a date? Uh, last October, the 20th. Would, um, professional etiquette? Uh, no problem. Uh, she thought she had an appendicitis, uh, pains, etc., around the McBurney point. I examined her, told her to take it easy for a couple of days, no fats, no alcohol, and to come back if it persisted. It worked like the footballer's magic sponge. 
You never saw her again? No. Strange. What is? She was obviously known by a false name up here. By everyone except you. I can't lie to your doctor. It isn't done. Obviously not. Any joy? Six Prince Vale Road. Current occupant, Mrs. Rose Farriner. Rose? Greek for Rose? Rhoda. You're not saying they're the same person? Well, I'm not saying they're not. Well, we have her listed as away at the present. She phoned us and asked us to keep an eye on the place. Could explain why she hasn't been missed. Well, possibly. Anybody know what she looks like? No, apparently not. Can we go up there? They even look somebody, don't they? That letter box is a dead giveaway. I'll have a word with the home beat officer. What now? Talk to some of the neighbours. Why not? You take number four. We'll take number eight. She's a charmer. I divide people into two categories, life enhancers and the others, the detractors. She's definitely an enhancer. Does this uh, photo look anything like her? It's the dreaded bifocals next, but I'm fighting it. Uh, no, not a lot. Well, imagine it's an old photo, about 20 years old. I don't have that much imagination. Sorry, I can't see any resemblance. Well, do you know where she is now? Lake District, visiting her mother. I believe she's in a nursing home. How old is Mrs. Farrenheim? Forties. Oh, I'm not good on ages. For mother, read father. For nursing home, read hospital. For Lake District, Kings Markham. Why? Why all this subterfuge? She's not a criminal. She's a bright, lively, successful woman. Successful? She runs a boutique. The one on Montfort Circus. Mrs. Farner leave any keys? Yes. No, Reg, no way. If we have to, we'll get a warrant. Just thought I saw signs of a break-in. No. Man at the window? No. Listen, Reg, he's your nephew, but he's my governor. So be it. Any luck? A tentative idea of the photo. How tentative? Well, first of all, she said she'd seen the papers and it never occurred to her that it could have been Mrs. Farriner. But then, when I showed her the photo, she said, yes, it could be. Couldn't imagine why she hadn't seen it before. Well, no. The boutique. Right. We never discuss private matters. Do you know what part of the country she originates from? No idea. Does she have any accent? Not that I can detect. Uh, is she a secretive sort of person? No. There's a gulf of difference between being secretive and being a gossip. Do you know anything about Mr. Farriner? I gather he's long gone. Oh, which route? The divorce court or the cemetery? I don't know. An odd question. Do you know if Mrs. Farriner's had her appendix out? Are you serious? Totally. It doesn't seem right, standing here discussing her private, personal details. Oh, that does look lovely. Mrs. Moss, you know who we think Mrs. Farriner is, or was. It can't be Mrs. Farriner. She's in the Lake District. You had a postcard? No. Has she phoned? Look, she'll be back here next Monday. I can't wait until Monday. Now, you were telling me about her appendix. At first, she thought it was food poisoning, then a grumbling appendix. It was about six months ago, at the beginning of the
Oh, God. You nearly scared me off to death. Sorry. What are you doing here? Catching burglars. Neighbourhood watch, heard of it? Where that? Would have broke my heart. <laughs> when was the last time you were in here? <laughs> Name farrier mean anything to you? Isn't that something to do with shoeing horses? That's a farrier. Oh, you mean somebody who makes fur coats? Uh, Mrs. Crown, I get very tired of people who get cute with me. I like straight answers. Am I a suspect? You're one of the two people that knew the murdered woman. The other one's dead. I don't know anyone called farrier. Do you know if rode out a car? Bring it down here if she did. <laughs> Somebody actually take the trouble to pay that. <laughs> and she would have done. She liked showing off. Nice big Cadillac dripping with chrome filling off the street. That would have given her a charge. I was thinking more of a Citroen. Well, keys down here and car in London. Why? I don't know. I wonder who will get her money. Remember that phone call she made uh, the evening before she came down? Mm hmm Did she say anything about uh, going away? No. Yeah. That's why she was coming. Tell me. I wanted to see the old man before she left. Left for where? I don't know. I don't remember. Holidays? Business? I'll tell you something. She... she wasn't alone when she called. What? Did you hear somebody? No. Where did you know? Mm, it was her manner. Playing it on with a trowel. <laughs> Even called me darling. Was that unusual? Unique. She wanted someone to think I was her fancy man. Well, hang on a sec. You said she said hello, Lillian. I did, didn't I? Well, that doesn't tie in. Doesn't, does it? Oh. Her tone changed during the call. Well, you didn't say that before. I didn't remember it before. She got all mushy. Darling. Dear. As if someone had come into the room. Well, that's someone I'd like to meet. Any messages? Yes, call from Inspector Baker. Mrs. Farriner drives a Citroen. Ah. Coincidence? Not likely. No, not likely. Oh, any news about the warrant? Uh, no, not yet. But uh, you've got a visitor. Miss Patel. I told you a lie. Well, you're not the first, and I don't suppose you'll be the last. It makes me ashamed. Polly. She, she never goes out in the evenings alone. Never. If she works late, Mr. West drives her home and puts her in a taxi. She was attacked once, you see, years ago. She's been scared ever since. What is your lie, Miss Patel? I told you Polly was at home with me at night. And she wasn't. Came back late. I was asleep. I asked her about the next day. I knew she hadn't been with Grenwell because he was away. She said it was someone else. Do you believe her? Yes, I do. Why? Because I know she's so unhappy with her friendship with Grenwell. I think he's got a wife somewhere. It's creepy. Yeah, gives me the shippers. Shall we get back to your story, please, Miss Patel? Well, Polly and this man had... He's married, had been to Martell and spent the night there. She said this man's wife might be suspicious and there might even be private detectives following. Highly unlikely. Is it? I don't know about these things. If anyone asked, I was to lie. 
And that's what you thought we were, private detectives? Yes. Didn't Polly tell you afterwards that we were the police? We had a row. Well, any, anyway, I had to go out and get sick of hearing about Grenville. So what you came to tell me was that Polly wasn't with you that evening after all? Yes, it was when I found out who you really were. I mean, the piece about you in the paper and everything. That poor Comfrey woman. It seemed terrible to have wasted your time. It's no good lying to the police, Miss Patel. They have a nasty habit of finding out. Quarantine notice is gone. What? Said it's safe to come inside. Oh, is it as obvious as that? Sitting in the garden, washing the car. What is it next? Oh, I'll think of something. Hey. What is it? What's the matter? It's Sylvia, isn't it? Ma'am, what's she done? Well, it's not very pleasant when your own daughter tells you that a woman without a career is a useless encumbrance when she's past 50. Rubbish. And her looks have gone, and her husband only stays with her out of a sense of duty and because someone has to support her. If I were a bachelor and you were a single woman, which, of course, you wouldn't be, I'd ask you to marry me today. Mr. Oxford, this is so sudden. Give me time to think it over. No. Sorry. We're going out to celebrate our engagement. Tired? Yeah. Back aches. Let me fix it for you. No, don't bother. Don't touch me. Something to do with this man you met. When are you seeing him again? I don't know. You are seeing him again. Who is he? It's just a man. You met him once and you jumped into bed with him. That isn't like you. I liked him. He was fun. What was his name? Dave. Younger than Gren. I don't want to talk about it. The police are bound to ask. They don't know he exists. I told them. What? When? Today. God, why do you have to interfere? Mind your own bloody business, will you? Do you know what time it is? Very late. You're drunk. No. You've been drinking. Definitely. We tossed for it. Mother drove. <laughs> oh, Reg, I couldn't have exhausted. Oh. I think you're mad, both of you. Oh, it's nice to be mad occasionally. Look, a Thai gentleman gave me an orchid. We first saw the King and I the first week we were married. The film version. Well, that's what I meant. He couldn't afford anything no. else. I hate to be a killjoy. <laughs> Obviously. But your deputy chief constable has been calling. Oh, freebie. Three times. He thought it's strange you hadn't left a number. Oh, it must be important. He wants you at his house at 9.30. It must have come through. What? My quad again. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're both going senile. <laughs> Oh, 
pleasure. I was hoping to see you last night. Yeah, I'm sorry about that, sir. Uh, I took the wife out. Trouble? I oh, don't. No. Hmm. The Camborne police have got a warrant. Oh, good. Good. We enter the premises at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. You've got an invitation. Why not today, sir? Because they share my opinion, apparently. Which is? That she'll probably show up sometime today. Well, that's hardly likely if she's Rhoda Comfrey, sir. Well, it's hardly likely that she is Rhoda Comfrey, is it? <sighs> Just instinct, sir. You and your instincts. Uh, yes, sir. Which uh, is this battle, sir? Uh, Alamein? Alamein II. The turning point of the war. Monty and Rommel. <laughs> Not the end. Not the beginning of the end. But the end of the beginning. I said we can say the same after your little trip to London. Yes, sir. About this connection between Mrs. Farriner and Rhoda Comfrey, how does a love of words and writing tie in with owning a clothes shop? Rose, Rhoda, Rose. The writing was only intention 20 years ago. Perhaps she failed and opened a clothes shop. Lillian Crown said business. Lillian Crown said Tuesday. I'd still check it with my diary. I knew you two'd get on. What's the matter with you? You've got cold feet all of a sudden. Well, it's just that if I lived in a house like this and owned a boutique, I don't think I'd wear the sort of clothes that we found on Road of Comfrey. Well, perhaps it's part of her secrecy thing. Not wanting to be traced to London. Why would someone as well off as this keep a wallet that they presumably found lying on a bus? Like the look of it. A case of finders keepers, losers weepers. Good morning. Nice day for a housebreaking. You uh, know, Sergeant Kirk, don't you? Yeah. This is uh, DCI Wexford, DI Bird. Uh, do you mind if I try a couple of mine? Help yourself. Over to you. Well, it was just a long shot. Oh, we'd uh, better take a look round. Anything? Well, she doesn't stint herself. No. Very systematic. Files for everything. House, car, finance, diary, phone book. Let's see. Well, nothing under C for Comfrey or for Crown. Birth certificate. Yeah. Born Northampton, April 1945. More of you, man. No. So, it's true. Uh, we could explain, madam. No need. I know who you are. I just want to know what the hell you're doing. How did you know we were here? Mrs. Cohen, a neighbor, told me. Is that my birth certificate? You won't lose it, will you? Oh, good. We've got a quorum. Are you uh, Mrs. Farriner? I'm certainly not Joan of Arc. Until you walked into the room, we had reason to believe that you might be a Miss Rhoda Comfrey. What? The one that was murdered? Uh, that's the one. Christ, that front. She was 100. Uh, 45, to be precise. I am not 
45. Nor am I a country bumpkin, Kings Norton or wherever. Kings Markham. Never heard of the place. Not only have I never been there, I'm never going. Bernard, get me a gin, a large one. In our own defense, it was an old photo. Mr. Whatever your name, if you got an old photo of me, you'd see how wide of the mark you were. Who stroke of genius was this? Uh, mine. And who are you? Wexford. Detective Chief Inspector. <laughs> you sound rusty, like you ought to have straw behind your ear. How'd you come to pick on me? Miss Comfrey left this as her address. Well, I'm sorry to disillusion you, but I've lived here for the past ten years. Yes, well, all we can do is to apologize. Nothing's broken, no damage has been done. Everything will be restored uh, exactly as it was. That's not good enough, though, is it? This isn't a police state yet. You can't go around tearing up people's homes. Everything we did was legal. You've been prying into my future wife's private papers. With a purpose. Well, we'll see what our solicitor has to say. What was your name again? Uh, Wexford. Wexford. But I look so worried, all of you. I'm not going to sue or anything like that or phone the Home Secretary. I want to remember the name, though. I shall dine out on it, Mr. Wexford. Depend on it. Don't say it, Mike. Just don't say it. It's just what we're trying to avoid. Civil Liberties Brigade will have a field day. Gestapo tactics, I can hear them now. I mean, she talks. Uh, she said she wouldn't, sir. Yeah, but it's a woman's privilege to change her mind, isn't it? Look, I'll try to protect you, but well, for God's sake, stick to the book. You show me a book, Bobby, sir, and I'll show stick you... Stick to it. And if there's no progress by the end of the week, it'll call in the Met. Yes, I don't like it either. There's a slur on the force. Sir, thank you. You bought a sparrow, and you still think it's a canary. Well, take it from me. It won't sing, right? That's it. Oh, look who's here. It's Grandpa. I think Grandpa's busy, love. See how he is. I can manage out here. It's a passionate business, Dora. You poison someone or blow them up, that's cold, calculating, premeditated murder. But to take a knife and plunge it into somebody's chest while looking them in the eye, that takes passion. Somebody must have got themselves very worked up before they killed Rhoda. And I can't even find anyone who knew her. Grenville West. But does he? Does he know her? Yes. Killed with kindness by Grenville West. There's a dedication. Are you listening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For Rhoda Comfrey, without whom this book could never have been written. Show me. Oh, when did you spot this? Just after you left. God bless us, everyone. First published in 79. So they've known each other all that time. But he's still in France, isn't he? Yes. And you think it's in France? Well, more specifically, in Normandy. Well, we can only try. Do you have a photo? 
It won't be easy, you know. Normandy is rather vague and rather large. Hotel register? No. They're not as keen as they used to be. Half of them don't even bother anymore. You do realize that even if we do find him, we can't force him to return. Just because he happens to know somebody who happens to get herself murdered. Yeah, I understand that. But I need to talk to him. It's uh, that important? Vital. And that's it? No more? No. Why are you smiling? Well, we could have done all this on a fax machine. <laughs> all right, then, confession time. I'm playing Nookie. Okay, I know. Uh, nookie, even. <laughs> but. Uh, truant. Ah, yes, the, the truant. Creeping like snail and willing to school. That's me. I thought I'd have a few oysters, a couple of glasses of Chablis, let myself off the hook for a few hours. The time to think. Exactly. Phone in cars, bleep in pockets, tannoys, commission like un, s'il vous plaît. You've come to the right place. I'll, uh, I'll see you later. Merci. Guilty all day. No one can stop. Bon appétit. Good? Not good? Sublime. <laughs> <laughs> They're from Savas, the best. Vive la France. <laughs> oh, I had to look at uh, some clippings. Uh, do you want to talk about this? Or? Why not? Mm. A 45 year old woman. And quite ugly, huh? And a virgin. No. True. <laughs> well, only in England, huh? <laughs> no, but the question I ask myself is, what sort of man is it could get himself into such a frenzy over that? Huh? I mean, crime passionnel we know about in France, but, but this? What sort of passion is it? Something uh, kinky, maybe? Get up here. There's something very strange about this case. English? Are you English? Oh, uh, yeah. You stay long in Honfleur? Well, just until tonight. I'm catching the night very old. Doesn't give me long to show you the town. Should have uh, another twelve oysters. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> Did you see Dad? Briefly. What time was it when he got in? Heaven knows. Oh, poor devil. Poor devil, nothing. He smelled of garlic. Reeked of it. <laughs> well, what's he brought you? Oh, I haven't had time to open it yet. So many cases could never have been cracked. Oh. You're just taking my space. Sorry about the problem, will you? Right. This is getting to be a habit. Uh, a 
Only this time it's different. This time I brought Polly. Oh. Two lawyers instead of one. Is that the difference? Where is she? The loo. She said she felt sick and one of your policemen showed her where the loo was. All right. I'll get somebody to bring you up to my office when she's feeling better. Ask Mr. Burden to bring them up, would you? Thank you. I hope you're feeling better, Miss Flinders. If you have anything to say, may I suggest that you say it? And to be kinder to her? The time for kindness is past. That postcard from Grenville? From Bayer. It's last year's. I thought you wouldn't know. Just as you thought we wouldn't know about Miss Comfrey. She's not well, Mr. Wexford. So you said. She did research for his novels, didn't she? Do you know where she lived? Did you overhear Miss Comfrey making a telephone call saying where she'd be on Monday evening? Yes. Tell them, Polly. Tell them everything. Miss Patel, if there is any prompting to be done, I'll do it. Why did you lie about that postcard? Were you afraid for Mr. West? Yes, I suppose. Afraid that he had something to do with Miss Comfrey's murder? Afraid that he killed her? <laughs> All right. We'll leave it at that for now. I'll come and see you in London. Give you plenty of time to get into a calmer frame of mind. And Miss Flinders, I shall need to know that name. The name of the man you said you spent the night with. Wise. Let them sweat on it for 24 hours. First they lie to you, and then they come and tell you they've lied to you. I picked up some interesting information this morning. Oh? When those girls arrived, I'd just come back from seeing old Mrs. Parker. I told her about Grenville West and the book dedication. You know what she said? The only West I ever knew was Lillian. Lillian? Lillian Crown? Her first husband's name was West. Oh, there is a link after all. I said, not this is under 25 gold's own tea. Mrs. Crown, could I have a word with you? Oh, Mr. Wex, for you anything. <laughs> Excuse me, I think I'm going to get lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you tell me you were once Mrs. West? Mr. Wexford, I didn't know you was interested. <laughs> Who was Mr. West? Ronnie was a soldier boy. Remy. Killed in Germany on manoeuvres. A lorry turned over. He was on my knee. Oh, sorry. Uh, did he come from a big family? <sighs> He's been dead for 20 years. Oh, well, bear with me. Look, this is important. Well, there were three others. There was two brothers and a sister. <laughs> See, I'm interested in any West who was related to Rhoda. Well, there was Emma. That was Ron's sister. Now, she never spoke to me after we were married. I think we can take it. She wasn't very keen on me. <laughs> then there was Sidney. He died. There was all something wrong with him. And Leonard, now, he was all right. We got on well. I still have a Christmas card from him and his wife. Oh, and do they have any children? Well, family. I mean, they're not children. There must be 30s. Uh, there's Leslie and... Uh... Oh, no, you've got... Um, Charlie. And as far as you know, uh, is there a... Grenville West, amongst them. Of course. There is. Cool. Of course there is. They're all called Grenville. What? All of them. What do you mean? It's a family name. Ronald Grenville West, Leonard Grenville West, Sydney Grenville West, Leslie Grenville West, Charlie Grenville West, Fred Grenville West. Must be the world's number one Grenville West fan. Or well, maybe number two. It was the name, of course, that first hooked me. You've got a Russian edition. Yes. Picked that up in Leningrad. Guess he doesn't get much of a royalty on those. I don't see any family resemblance. I thought I could. But then he takes such an awful photo. <laughs> You're working your way through all the Grenville Wests. Yes, there's a fair list. Of course, uh, 
Some of you are dead, of course. <laughs> now, Lillian's boy is, uh, is in a mental home. There's uh, a 72-year-old, one who went to Australia on the last assisted passage. And there's you. You say you can't remember Rhoda Comfrey. Well, if I met her, I was too young to remember. What about your famous namesake? Well, as I say, at first it was the name, and then when I read the books, I spotted certain geographical locations that I recognised. I'm surprised you didn't try and contact him. No, I did. I wrote to him, care of his publisher. Any joy? Yes, yes, I've kept his letter. Would you like to see it? Oh, yes, if it's uh, no trouble. It's no problem. That and a Hampshire scorecard with Dennis Compton's autograph. Some of my personal treasures. Thank you. I can trace no connection between your ancestry and mine. I was born in London. My father's family from Lancashire. My mother from the West Country. I'm sorry I can be of no further assistance. I'm, of course, entirely pleased that you enjoyed my book so much. Very nice. Is it? Why, isn't it? I don't know. I was always disappointed. I thought it was prissy. A bit tight arsed. Could be. Wouldn't have killed him to have handwritten it. Well, perhaps he has a lot of fan mail. Possibly. Did you uh, ever ask any of your relatives if they knew? No one had ever heard of him. I suppose you expect a tip. <laughs> One for you? One for Tiny Tim. Where's my got Tim? I know. You better go and find it before it melts. But can we go and look for that one, Pa? Maybe. Uh, tomorrow. So won't be too next day to come for us in an hour. Is he? Yes. What time? Five o'clock. Oh. All right, then. We'll think about it. Dad. What is it? The armistice or a truce? I don't know what it is. We're starting with a dishwasher. Oh? No, no, no. That's not why I'm going back. Simply, and cornerly, I couldn't manage any longer without him. Nothing corny about that. I might need my wellies, Mum. Your wellies? What for? Because we're going to see the rat. Oh, no, love. There isn't time. Grandpa promised. Did you? Yes, well, uh, sort of. Well, it just better be a quick one then. Come on. Well, put his anorak on, Dad. Lena! Melina! Yes? Pauline Flinders. Speaking. You don't know me, but I need to talk. It's about Grenville West. Grenville? Yes. Can I come on? It won't take a minute. If you won't let me up, perhaps you could come down. I'm releasing the door. Miss Flinders, my name's Hetherington. Do you know him? Yes. Well, know of him. You better come in. You ought to be careful. One hears such awful stories. I wouldn't have let you up if you hadn't mentioned Grenville. Do you know him well? I work for him. I have to talk to him, urgently. He's in France. But is he? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. 
Do you have a number somewhere I could reach him? No. Have you heard from him since he left? No. Is he running away from something? I don't know. Reg? Pierre Lacan. Oh, hello, Pierre. How is La Belle France? Oh, beautiful. Nice and sunny. And England? Almost the same. Any news? No, nothing so far. Uh, did Dora like her present? Oh, very much. Reg, I was thinking about your friend, Monsieur West. Is it possible that he could be in hiding? Looks very like it. How long has it been now? About three weeks. Three weeks? He could be in Tibet by now. Oh, very amusing, Pierre. Oh, I've got a bone to pick with you. What's so funny about me being picked up by a bird? I'm not that old, you know. A bird? Oh, <laughs> that was no bird, Reg. That was a travelo. What? A travelo, a transvestite. Uh, hold on. Come in. Yeah? Uh, Reg. Would you like me to have Mr. West's photo put on television? On the television? Oh, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Pierre. Bye-bye. Mr. Fortune's back from leave. He called while you were on the other line. And? They found West's car. Where? In a London hotel garage. You let him up here, but you didn't ask who he was. His name was Harrington or Harrison, something like that. Who was he? I don't know. A friend of Gren's. Did he say so? Yes, I, th I think he did. <sighs> You're incredible, Polly, really. He said he needed to contact him. But you don't know what about or who he is or if Harrington was his real name? Well, why would he lie? How did he know about you? He didn't say. <sighs> you didn't ask. I never thought. Doorbell rings and there he is. I suppose. <laughs> I'm scared now. No need. Don't worry. I won't leave you. About 70 every day. You put on a couple of pounds. I'm surprised. Three meals every day, two lengths of a bird bath. It's a killer. Sorry, mate, sir. It's all right. I haven't stolen you, Thunder. Oh, uh, you know, we found the car. That and not much more. Well, I'll tell you what we know briefly, and then we'll go up there. West, he checked into this hotel on the 7th, the Sunday, and he left sometime on the Monday, that's two Mondays ago, without paying his bill. Well, it took him a hell of a long time to get after him, didn't it? Well, they knew him, so there was no panic. When did you hear? This morning. The manager called. Oh, he sent Clements round. What make of car is it? A uh, red Citroen. It was on Wednesday the 10th that the chambermaid reported that the bed wasn't being slept in. And they weren't suspicious? Well, there was still a suitcase in there, and there was a car in the garage. Could have been knocked down or mugged or lost his memory. Yeah, it's true. Well, apparently it wasn't until the end of the second week that they phoned up his flat. There was no reply. So they sent someone round. He had a word with the person in the wine bar, Vivian's Vineyard. Yeah, I know it, yeah. Well, he said that West had gone to France. Well, now the hotel manager did start to worry. West was supposed to be in France, whereas... In his, his car. That's right, whereas his car was in the hotel garage. Well, now there was a panic. They contacted West's publisher, and they gave him the name of his agent, and finally, he did what he should have done in the first place, he called us. What do you make of all that, Reg? Well, either he never went to France, or he changed his mind and didn't go in the car. It all began on the night of the 6th. Mr. West telephoned. Uh, did you know? Not personally. But he'd eaten in the restaurant a few times, entertained guests here, used the bar. Oh, sorry, go on. He asked if he could book a room for three nights, the Sunday, Monday and Tuesday. He arrived on the Sunday night about seven and checked in. Did you see him? Yes, I did. Did he sign the register? Yes. Here it is. Mr. Hetherington, weren't you surprised the local man who lives walking distance of the hotel should book in for three nights? Well, not really. People lose their house keys. They fall out with their wives. They make over the house to the kids for a party. Three nights? One night for the party. Two nights for the painters to redecorate. This is his suitcase. When was the last time you saw him? I didn't see him again, not after he registered. Did anybody see him leave? No. You checked? Of course. Those are the clothes he wore when he arrived. 
That's where I got the phone number of his publishers, so, etc. What about the car? It's still in the garage. Not having his keys, we couldn't shift it. Oh, well, we might be able to help with there. Door and boot locked. Try these. Have you ever been through this before? Hotel keys. Passport. It's not in France, then. Not on this passport. Tear the jackal. What about it? Proved how easy it is once and for all to obtain a passport. You think you might have another? It's a possibility. It's mine. I say, you've got as nice job as Sancerre. You like it? It's nice. Sergeant Clements is round at the records office. Well, there can't be many John Groville West, born on uh, September 9th, 1953. Among his things, there's a check card, American Express, some traveler's checks, ferry tickets, and a couple of thousand francs. Well, he didn't mean to leave those behind, did he? I don't think he ever went anywhere. Why were his car keys found in the country house? Presumably Rhoda left them there. Well, where'd she get them? Two sets of keys. And where's the other? Wherever West is. Maybe Rhoda was blackmailing West. Well, she's known him for ten years. Why should she start now? But maybe she'd been doing it for ten years and suddenly got too greedy. What have you done with my mate Grin? Inspector Burden, Victor Vivian. Pleasure. Well, it's beginning to look as if he didn't go to France after all. Beginning to look serious, if you ask me. Well, it's been serious for a long time. You reckon he's on the hot cross? What? Done a runner? Oh, maybe. Any ideas? When he first came here all those years ago, uh, do you know where he came from? No. In fact, he was here before I was. Did he ever talk about home or mention some favourite part of the country? No, he wasn't much of a talker. Didn't mention family or relatives, anything like that. In truth, <laughs> no. That's not fair. Well, oh, go on, say it. Well, he often gave the impression that he was doing you a favour by talking to you. Did you see him that Sunday night, the night that he left? Sure, he popped in for a St. Clemens. Just off Vic. <laughs> I can hear him now, funny, piping voice. What was he wearing? Oh, he wasn't a snappy dresser. Uh, brown slacks, polo neck, suede jacket, I think. Could have been a cardigan. Casual. <laughs> we joked about what we was going to have for dinner this time tomorrow. Tripe de can. <laughs> Hear him now. Rhoda, unloved and unlovely, gets a crush on West. He, the vain egotist, encourages her. Well, he doesn't discourage her. And along comes Polly Flinders, young, new boiled and willing. Rhoda senses a chill. Well, she's fantasized this into a Bet Davis type romance. And she tackles West head on. What's he doing in King's Markham? Well, I don't know yet. But they fight. And he kills her. Now, how does that crap you? <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> Who's Bet Davis, anyway? You look good in a helmet, Mike. Jerry, we have the moon. Don't let us ask for the stars. <laughs> you ever heard that? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, you can't help some people, can you? Oh, that was quick. Made efficiency, sir. Uh, right, the birth was registered at Myringham. You probably know it. 9th of September, 53, same as a passport. John Grenville West. Father's name is given as Ronald Grenville West. Mother Lillian West, and she was born Lillian Crawford. Lillian Crown. You know it? Yeah. And no other Wests, John Granville or whatever, born on that day? No. Nope. Stu, if you know the mother, you must know the son. Yes. He's retarded. Been in an institution ever since he was a child. I wonder.
Twist. Twist. Ah. John West. John Grenville West. Yes. What exactly did you want to know? Well, I'd like to see him and, if possible, to talk to him. Oh. I'm afraid that won't be possible. Why not? Sergeant, John West left here 16 years ago. Oh, I see. If Granville West is who we think he is, that makes he and Rhoda cousins. What does that do to us? Not a lot. Does it? I don't know, an ex-inmate from a mental institution now writing literate and commercially successful historical novels with a working knowledge of Jacobean drama. I mean, is that likely? Hello? You had heard of Bette Davis, hadn't you? Yes, I had. <laughs> she was wonderful in Gone with the Wind. She wasn't in Gone with... Oh, ho, oh, oh. ho. Very funny. Hello? Waxford speaking. Yeah? Put him on. Sergeant? West left Abbott's Palmer in 1973, when he was 20. Left? Yeah. They hadn't the facilities to look after him. Well, tell me where he is, not where he isn't. He's in a similar place, a bit larger, near Eastbourne. What, did you see him? I saw him. Did you speak to him? No. Well, why not? I told you... He can't talk, sir. He's a vegetable. He always was and he always will be. Well, how did that happen? I don't know. Oh, thank you very much, Sergeant. Very helpful. Anything else, sir? No, I'll be back in the office tomorrow. Sir? He's still institutionalised. Place outside Eastbourne. Oh. Oh. So, West knows him or knows of him and uses his, his details for his own passport. Looks like it. If our Granville West knows John Granville, knows his background, his circumstances, etc., why do none of the locals know our Granville West? 6.30, Wexford said. Have you got an address? You fool. Dave. Not even a phone number. There is no Dave. You know bloody well there isn't. Of course I don't know. It'd be good if you could think first, wouldn't it? Polly, for God's sake, how was I to know? Why do you keep interfering in my life? I did seeing you turn yourself into a skippy. It wasn't worthy of you. He isn't worthy oh, of you. Stop it! Hello? Yes, Sergeant? Hello, Mr. Wexford. Hello, Mr. Wexford. Hello, Mr. Okay. Oh, great. Dad, I don't believe it. Oh, God. Well, I was in the vicinity. Proceeding in a northerly direction. Exactly. Why didn't you call? Well, I didn't know if I could get away. Oh, God. <laughs> That's a lovely surprise. <laughs> You look whacked. Well, I've had a couple of rough weeks. I saw some of the rehearsals. Well, what did you think? Oh, when you came on in drag. Drag. Listen to you, they don't call it drag. Well, dressed up as a man. A lawyer's clerk, not a mere man. I didn't recognise you until you spoke. Oh, you're not supposed to. Graziano doesn't even recognise me. Uh, even Graziano doesn't recognise me. Even Graziano doesn't recognise me. Yeah, well, he hasn't known you as long as I have. Um, how long does it... Take you to get dressed up as a man? Five minutes. No more. What do you think? Oh, great. <laughs> Isn't Portia marvellous? Well, so are you. Oh, come on, Dad. Larissa, she's the key to the whole play. <laughs> if only it were. <laughs> can you stay for the last act? Then we can talk. No, no, I can't. I, I, I better be going. How's Mum? Working too much, worrying too much. Nothing changes. What about Sylvia? Well, they've decided to try again. Oh. Oh, sorry, darling. Oh, sorry, Dad. I, I'm late. I'm All right, dear. Well, I, I'll go.
Yeah, they'll, they'll usually only accept burgers and chips. I don't know. It could be late, I'm afraid. Look, I've told the children not to wait up for me, so don't let them twist your arm, will you? What are you doing in the dark? Thinking. Don't bother. We're going out. Where to? We've got an arrest to make. Oysters, Mike. Never tried them. Oh, you should. Very good for you. Hello. Inspector Burden. I have Mr. Wexford with me. Polly in? Yes. I warn you, she's in a terrible state. Is she? When I told her it was to be 6.30, I thought she'd faint. But then you're not here to talk to me, are you? You're very free with your advice, Miss Patel. Do you find that many people take it? I need you to help. Really? Yes. I gave you some advice once. I was only trying to help you. I don't know what you mean. Oh, I think you do. Remind me. I advised you not to lie to the police. When you step up into that witness box and swear to tell the truth, the whole truth... I'm not going into any witness box. Which you are. You can count on that. I told Polly you were here. When did you find out? I don't know what you mean. There you are. You're doing it again. You're lying to me. About the man she said she spent the night with. There was no man. That wasn't the question. When? When did you know where she really was? Even you can't have forgotten he was the night of Rhoda's murder. The night you said she was at home cutting out her dress with you. It's nothing to do with me. Oh, Polly. Really? She was besotted by him. Cooking little supper dishes, going to the laundrette, running errands. Cooking his shoes to the cobblers. I don't know what your part is in all this. I just hope that you can live with yourself afterwards. time, Polly. There was no man, no Dave, was there? Was there, Polly? I was scared. Scared? Of going out at night. You'd been attacked. I carried this knife. Flick knife? Almost a year in my handbag. The flick knife? Where is it now, Polly? Where is it? The canal at Kenbourne Lock. Mike, come in. Tell us what happened, Polly. You tell us. I promise you'll feel better if you do. You tell us, and we'll do the rest. It was uh, February the 5th. Rhoda's birthday. Yes? 
You were there. Remember? Why don't you take it from there? We were in his flat. How many? Three. It was a little party. Sometime during the evening, Rhoda asked if she could use the phone. Right? Go on. I overheard part of it. She was making arrangements to uh, meet her father in Stowerton. In the infirmary on Monday. On a Monday, you followed her. I saw Rhoda get on the bus with another woman. And I got on too. I left the bus at the same stop. Followed her down the footpath. Why? To kill her? To talk to her. To reason with her? Yes. To dissuade her? Yes. From coming between you and West? Yes. And something went wrong. You. What are you doing here? Didn't you realize? <laughs> she laughed at me, didn't she? <laughs> Provoked, you stabbed her. What happened? I wiped the blade on the grass. Walked to the station, caught the first train, and came home. On the way, I threw the knife into Kenborn Lock. It was like you said. Just like you said, and why you said. All in, Flinders. You are charged with the murder on February the 8th of Rhoda Ann Comfrey. You do not have to say anything unless you wish to. But anything you do say may be given in evidence. journeys like that. No. I suppose there's no doubt. No doubt? That she did it. Well, you heard her. She couldn't have been confessing to protect West? No. She did it. Howard will have the lock dragged, and tomorrow we'll have the murder weapon. So, West had nothing to do with it, then? West had everything to do with it. Bear with me, Mike. I didn't hear the car. Mike gave me a lift. You should be asleep. So should you, by the look of you. Nice to have the house to yourself. You know something? It was too quiet. 
Never the time and the place and the loved one all together. Do I take it it's all over? Yeah. Good feeling. Lousy. Tell me. You're looking to do the third right shit, Dora. Rich. No other word for it. Strung a young person along. I've let lie to me. I've lied to her. Altogether confession. Does she realize? But she will. And I tell her. Do you have to? Is your name Pauline Flinders? Yes. You're charged with the murder of Rhoda Ann Comfrey in King's Markham on the 8th of February. Do you understand that charge? Yes. I understand, Chief Inspector, that you're asking for a week's remand in custody. I am, Your Worship. Very well. Will you give short evidence of arrest, please? We remand you in custody until this day week. I heard he'd gone into Miringham, sir. To the library. Oh. I hope his book wasn't over to you. You in on this as well, are you, Doctor? Yes. I tried to nail him after the hearing, and I've never seen anybody move so fast. What's he up to, do you know? No, sir. Oh, I'm sorry I'm late, sir. Traffic on the bypass. Bumper to bumper. Oh, well, shall we start? Oh, if you're ready, sir. Before we begin, I'd like to ask a couple of questions. The girl's confession. Is it genuine? Definitely. Mr. Will it stick in court? Oh, she killed Rhoda. No question, there's nobody else who could have. Motive? She thought that Rhoda was in love with West. Well, and was therefore a threat? Well, it's not as simple as that. In fact, I had to complicate Polly's story, otherwise I wouldn't have got a confession. But maybe we'll leave that for the moment. Oh, I suppose we'll have to. By the way, sir, the murder weapon is on its way down from the Met. Flick knife? Yes. Good. I hope that whatever it is you've got there will help us to find West. West is dead, sir. Dead? That's why he never went back to the hotel. <laughs> and I suppose little Polly Flinders killed him. Absolutely right. If he's dead, where's the body? Exactly. Well, let's skip that for a moment. Aeonism. Len, the floor is yours. Aeonism, spelt E-O-N-I-S-M. It's a term coined by the sexicologist Havelock Ellis 
in uh, 1928, Studies in the Psychology of Sex, Aeonism, and Other Studies. He took the name from that of the Chevalier d'Aeon. Who was... Man, um, who's this man? For 33 years, the Chevalier d'Aeon masqueraded as a woman. Well? And for 20 years, Rhoda Comfrey masqueraded as a man. Grenville West. What? It's true. So what are you saying? That when Polly murdered Rhoda Comfrey... She also murdered Grenville West. Two murders, one body. This is unbelievable. But it's true. But how on earth did Rhoda get away with it? People must have guessed, or at least suspected. James Barry, oh, not the Peter Pan James Barry, went to medical school and spent a lifetime as a medical officer in the army. In the army. And it wasn't until after his death that they found that he was a woman. And not only a woman, but a mother. Doctor, does this make any sense to you at all? Oh, yes, the cases are well documented. In point of fact, the Chevalier lived with a woman friend who never for a moment doubted that he was a woman. Look, I know you two have pulled some crackers out of the fire. I told you it wasn't going to be straightforward, sir. Last week, I did something that I've never done in all the years in the job. Well, maybe you better not tell I me. walked out. I took time off. I went to France. Uh, I thought you were liaising with Lequin. I wanted a break, a chance to think. A couple of glasses of wine, some oysters. Look, I think it will be politic if we forgot this conversation. After dinner, or superb dinner, a French bird tried to pull me. Ah, she wasn't a bird. At least, she was a cockbird, not a hen. Was it? A poor, sad French transvestite gave me a clue I'd been looking for for three weeks. My daughter did the same yesterday. What about the age difference? Rhoda Comfrey was 45. West was said to be 35. More testimony for those that believe that men age better than women. My daughter's 24. But in her doublet and hose, she looked like a boyish 16. But what started Rhoda off in dressing as a man? Uh, well, that we shall never know. How bloody cruel to lead Polly on like that. Understandable, though. Is it? Forty loveless, lonely years, and somebody falls in love with you? Some are of the same sex. Uh, beggars and choosers. Uh, how does this tie in with her being a virgin? Isn't it? Aeonists have an almost asexual disposition. Well, so that once he, she, Rhoda, became a man, then she never reverted? Uh, no, not never. She had to go to the doctor once. Gave the right name, but a false address. It turned out to be Mrs. Farringer's. And where does the hotel fit in? A place to change roles. Arrive as Granville West. Leave as Rhoda Comfrey. Any other problems? You told me the stabbing was a passionate crime, remember? So what changed Polly from a, I forget your phrase, a lumpish, naive, innocent 25-year-old into a knife-brandishing murderess. I'm coming down your way next Monday. Polly heard Rhoda make a date to come to Stout Infirmary. I'll be in Kingsmarkham about... Had West got a woman tucked away somewhere. All right, darling. Polly came down to Kingsmarkham too. She stations herself there for the end of visiting time. She anxiously vets the faces. No sign whatever of Granville West. Just one vaguely familiar 45-year-old woman. She starts to follow. What exactly is she following? Family likeness, maybe. But they take the same bus from Stourton to King's Mark. She gets off the bus and follows Rhoda. Eventually, she confronts her. You. 
It's then. What are you doing? Eyeball to eyeball. That she sees the truth. Didn't you realize? The man she's in love with is actually a 45-year-old woman. The realization totally unhinges her. I still think it's unbelievable. Congratulations. Marvelous piece of work. Thank you, sir. See you later, Rex. Yeah, sure, old man. I now know what it feels like to be in a 10,000 meter race and be lapped. Oh, I'm sorry, Mike. Listen, I, I can explain. No. Can I ask a question? Do. Does Polly realize yet that you know? Are you going to tell her? It'll come out in court. You've got to stand up and admit in public that she'd fallen in love and then been deceived and humiliated like that. She's blocked it out. Won't even admit it to herself. out of my hands, Polly, you know that. What you know, and I know, they will know. The court. Know what? Why you killed Rhoda Comfrey. It was like you said she was taking Grenville away. No, she wasn't. Let her tell me, Polly. I ever heard the phone call in Grenville's flat, I followed her. Better to say it. When your story comes out in court. No. It will come out in court. No. I killed Rhoda Comfrey. It'll give you a defence lawyer something to fight with. I killed Rhoda Comfrey. I killed Rhoda Comfrey. And Grenville West. They were one and the same person, Paul. You mustn't tell them. Please. You mustn't tell them. There's nothing I can do. It's out of my hands now, Paul. Oh, please. Sylvia on the phone. She's had another row with Neil. Well, it's a pity she can't meet Polly Flinders. Then she'd know what real problems are. <laughs> 